Bonjour. Welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd just do a bit of a recap. You know, was it last week? Oh, can't remember. I showed you spraying the MDF panelling in that bathroom ensuite. Well, that bathroom ensuite's now been um, nicely painted up. The ceilings have been done. The walls have been lined with 800 lining paper. And I've also sprayed all the panelling you can see over my shoulder. Brought it up to a finish of Everall Aqua 40 over that bare MDF. It's had a coat of um, a no tex Advil. Well, it wasn't, it probably hell me. Thinned down for the first coat. Did all the priming, like I always say. Prime first, then do the filling. So corking, any bits of filling. And then it had a hell me undercoat. And then actually it had three nice, even thin coats of um, Everall 40. So we've got a lovely sheen on all this panelling here. But what I want to talk to you today, mural hanging wallpaper. So if you want to see a room that looks like this, you see, turned into something like to this, I'll show you. To start with, because I bet there's been an ad break there, I bet there has. To start with, let's just talk about the lining. So. We've done the ceiling and I've actually used on the ceiling because it's in an ensuite. I'm just panning around so you can see me. Because it's in an ensuite, I've used Zinza's Perma White and it's the one that you can use in bathrooms, toilets, high humidity areas or areas where um, you've got condensation because it's the mold one. So let me go and get you the tin and I'll show you what that is. Thought to just fetch the tin because it's a lot easier. It's this. It's the mold resistant paint. Can you just see it with the light? I have to say what brilliant stuff that is. I gave it three coats on the ceiling. There was a bit of filler, so I touched, spot primed um, where the filler was. And then I gave it three coats of this because there were some plasterers patching that, um, that had been done. But that paint, I've got to say, I'll be using that again because it went on a dream. It covered nicely. Obviously where there was dark bits of plaster, it um, struggled a bit to try and cover for two, but. I was giving it three and it went on beautifully. And I've actually, can you see that ceiling? I've actually brushed it with a four inch brush. Didn't get a roller out, I wanted a nice even coat. And give it a couple of hours, three hours before you give it the next coat and it went on a dream. So we've spoke about ceiling paints in the bathroom on three brilliant kitchens. I'd use it again. Right, my next thing I just want to talk about on this preparing for putting a mural wallpaper on, 800 lining paper. I've told you before, I've used 800 lining paper. It's a good base and it gives you a good base to work on for expensive wallpapers. I don't want to go in the ins and outs of why you line. Um, there's a, a link over that corner, that corner there. There's a link uh, why you should use lining paper. If you want to take the chance not to line, that's entirely up to you, but we're not on jobs that people don't want to pay for lining. So that's why. Um, I'll be lining virtually everything that I do when it comes to paper, and particularly when you're looking at £100 a roll or papers, and even less. I mean, the, the job I did the other week, it was only about £12 a roll, it's still lining the walls because it gives it a clean, sound surface to work on. Yeah, we're not going in that, just look at that link that was over my shoulder. But what I've done on this, all the walls were vertical. I didn't cross line, they were vertical hung. I know where the drops are going to be, so actual joints aren't going to be a problem. They're all butt jointed and what I've done this morning, I've just gone around, felt the walls because you've got a little bit of furriness where you've got the um, overspray from the panelling down here around the bottom edges. So I've gone over all the walls, given them a nice sand down. I've checked for any edges that might be a little bit proud. I want to be proud because you do butt joint and it's lining paper you can get um, trimming that isn't brilliant when you're going over walls and sometimes it not overlaps, but sometimes it just presses up against the other butt joint and um, you get it springing slightly. But you get your seam roller on it when you're hanging it and if you come to it you can still feel something. Just get your sandpaper and just rub them off. And then it's also good practice just to scratch up the wall anyway because um, you're going to be pasting the wall with this paper and we want a nice surface for it to go on. So we don't want any spots of paint from um, splashes from the ceiling. and. Um, it's all good to go. I'm just going to do the last bit of cleaning and we're going to get the um, paper off the floor, get some sheets down and we're going to start wallpapering and I'll come back to you and we'll discuss how we're going to attempt to do this 
one, well, it's not one piece, but it's a mural that goes from this corner all the way around. So nothing's going to pat and repeat, it goes all the way around the room and finishes against this tiling just here. So it'll be an interesting one, and I'll be back in a minute. Welcome. I said to be back in a few minutes and the yeah, I'm back in a few minutes. Now, this is the paper that we're hanging. Can you see? I'll zoom in. It's on one, one mural. Can you just see it? I'll try and quick. It's a one mural paper, i.e. it's one picture going all the way around the room. And this works out with 18 panels. And the 50, 500, uh, 500 millimeters, 50 centimeters wide. Now, what I would say about pattern placement, because I've mentioned in other videos before about pattern placement, you can see on that little drawing picture, it's telling you the pattern, i.e. the batches going round, and it's 18 panels. So each panel you can just see on there is where the picture's going to be. So look in your room to work out where you started. Now I've just measured up from this corner, because obviously you've got to either go left to right or right to left. I've measured up from this corner and counted the widths of paper going round. Now this pattern has got two distinctive, I don't know whether they, I don't know what are they, what, two distinctive birds, oh, I can't focus in, two distinctive birds like peacocks in a tree. Now I want to know where those peacocks are falling. So if I've started on this corner, I've worked my way round and counted the nine stroke 10 panels in where those peacocks are. And guess where they are if I work from the right hand side. The fall is length number nine, which would go around the corner and then length number 10. So actually on that corner, this room, you see, corner of this room, that's where the birds in the tree would be sitting. Well, I don't want that. So I'm going to start from the left hand side. I'm going to start from the left hand side from these tiles and work my way around, all the way around. And then, based on those birds are in the tree on nine and ten, number nine is there just overlapping around the corner, and number 10 is there. So that will be visually a lot better for standby to have those birds on a main wall there. Personally, I'd like to move on this bigger wall over here, if you can see. I'd like them there, but the way the pattern is, because it's all telling you where the picture's gonna be. Can you just see that? I think you can just see it in sections, nine, uh, eight, 18 drops. It's a paste the wall, easy peelable. You've got your light fastness and it's uh, a washable. So there you can see, it's telling me that on this roll, because you can just see it there, this is part one of two. And it tells you that that has got the first drop on it, which is on the left-hand side. And that's where I'm gonna start. And my left-hand side is here against this tile edge. Now, hopefully, if that tile edge is as true as what the tilers have said it is, I'll get the laser on it, I'll hang straight to that corner and work from there. I've got a feeling that'll be plumb. So I'll work from that and then go around the room. So I'll see when I've got some on. This is great. I think this is one of the best tilers I've been on the job with. I've got the, if we move that laser liner there, see the laser liner? we here. I've got it on vertical. I'm just bringing that in line now with his tiles. Just get it lined up. Now, I will say a blind man on a galloping horse isn't going to be too critical on if that is out by one millimeter, because that's all about that. I'd say that's probably all it is. If that, I don't even think it's out. Now that's probably because the tiler also used a laser liner, because I saw him with a laser liner. 
and that is spot on for me. So when I'm hanging my wallpaper, I'm going to actually go from that corner edge, whatever you want to call it, and work into that door frame, and then we'll go across the top. That will be panel number one, and then panel number two is actually a short, a little short one where that extractor terminating switch is. So that's where we are. Brilliant. I'm dead chuffed. If we can tag that tiler into that, James Morris, brilliant, brilliant tiling. So jobs are good. So here we are, just do a quick one. I've, um, the instructions for the paper were in, I've just got them out, were in the actual roll. Now, bit of a tricky one, because this is in, I think it's in French. I'll have to do a Google Translate on that one. So you'll have to Google Translate uh, and get that instructions. But I should think it just says paste the wall and just the usual stuff. So uh, that, that, that should be quite good. Here they are, the instructions are on the other side in English. Right, so forget the bit about the French bit. So that's by the by. Right, let's come back to, to dear me, it is Monday morning. Yeah, all right. So there's the instructions in English. Let's move those out of the way. Now each panel is marked. This is the first one. And interestingly, they are odd numbered panels. So this is panel number one, and then you'll see it's number one. So what you do is you just cut off below there so you know where you are. Now the next panel along is odd numbers, so panel one, panel three, the next one after that will be one, two, three, so that'll be five, the one after that will be five. So you're going to say where's the twos and the fours and the sixes, yeah, two times table is a lot easier, isn't it? That is on the second roll. So here we go with the second roll up, two of two. And if I open that out, so what you do is you work off alternate rolls. If I just roll that out for you, all the way, there we go, there with panel two. So there's panel, there's panel two, that one's panel four. So just be mindful, always get your rolls out so you know what you're actually working with, because they're not always... Um, consecutive one, two, three, four. So there you go. I just wanted to come back in um, in between of this showing you how to do this um, papering. We've got a really tricky cut here. Can you see my laser liner working brilliantly? Laser liner. We've got a tricky cut here. We've gone over the. It's only five hundred um, centimeters wide. Uh, five hundred centimeters. That'd be massive, wouldn't it? Um, 500 millimetres, sorry, 100 centimetres, yeah, 500 millimetres, so it's a short piece, and I got a piece that went from there to the corner and then back out to there. Now, normally when you come to a, an internal or an external, what you do is just overlap quarter of an inch, wrap round one way or the other, and then place your paper over the top, so you can get a neat pack match, but because this is an angle that's only just slightly on a percentage, it's not, I don't know, percentage, however you would call it. Oh, can you see? It's got a slight kink to the wall. So what I've done, I put the piece in in one go. Let's try and get it out of the line. I put the piece in in one go. Got it down, got my edge matching there correctly, just over the top. Got my laser liner to give me an idea how it was really worked it with the spatula into that corner all the way down corner it's not corner crease all the way down got it in position made sure that i was looking good on my laser liner and i've cut using a straight edge i've cut following that crease all the way down that's slight bit of a kink oh nearly dropped fake all the way down now instead of then hutching, shuffling it across and giving a bit of an overlap into that angle, I've literally made sure it went butt joint, sorry, butt joint up against the piece just there. So 
instead of going in one, and if you're a, a DIY or an amateur and you don't know about doing corners and things, sometimes people um, go into the angles in one and then back out again. That's not a good practice to do because what happens, these, even though you've got them down, when you go into them, once they dry out with the paste, it balloons in caravans and it balloons up. So what I've done is in effect, cut top to bottom, relieve that tension and the pressure from when it's going to be drying out and literally bumped it across. You can see, I'm bumping it across, get me a sponge on it. So that angle there is like a butt joint. And thankfully it's kept, you know, you can see by the lens. It's kept the pattern going all the way down, matching nicely. And where we've got a bird's beak, you see the bird's beak just there, the finger, it's flowing lovely. And as, it, as we've got the laser, we've even kept it on the laser liner, on that good edge there, and then that'll take me into the corner. So does that make sense? Instead of going into there in one and then back out, or cutting it and then overlapping. I've literally cut it to the actual crease of the corner angle and then butt jointed it. And I'll go back to it now and just work on it so it's not um, showing any edges, but bang it across, don't be frightened to do that. So that's your top tip Tuesday is cut it to release the pressure. Right, here we are, we've done it all present and correct, shall we say. It worked out that there was 18 drops, but I only needed 17 of those um, 18 drops. Um, quite simple to do. As I showed you on the board, they were all numbered. Just cut each uh, length off. Now, what did take me a little bit of time, what I was doing is making sure, because I talk about pattern placement, I had to, I probably had a good half an hour to an hour, just working out where all this sort of pattern was going in this room. Now, my big thing was, these are quite pedom pedom uh, pedometer. These are quite pedometer in the middle of the room. Pedometer. Yeah, you know what I mean, in the middle. Uh, pedometer, pedon yeah, pedon I can't even say it, predominant. So what I had to do is I watched um, how the fall from the top to the top of the head of the bird was there and then the bottom. So I gauged it that I knew I was going to be nicely making that a feature on that wall there. Now, unfortunately, I'll say unfortunately, with this sort of paper, there's quite a bit of bottom on these. Bottom, does that make sense? Bottoms. But I didn't want to have too much bottom because I didn't want to lose too much of the top. And particularly when the lowest bird was just there. If I hunched it up, some people say, why don't you shuffle it up? If I shuffled it up, that bird there would lose its head. Now, what I didn't want to be doing is losing that bird's head. So I worked the whole room really off the top of the bird's head and it's shoulders there so that's where the laser liner was going all the way around the room now once you've obviously got one on and you know where that's going to be um you're quite straightforward for the matching up of the paper but you are going to lose a little bit of the i'm going to say blossom um but because it's such a random pattern because it's no no match on this i kept it nicely going around the top there's the butterfly there. We lost a bit of blossom there, but I'm quite happy with that. Even though we've had to lose some of the bottom and when I mean some of the bottom, I was cutting this sort of distance off the bottom. Now that's just how it's been measured up and how much salvage was left. As you can see, that's quite a big chunk, chunk of trunk there, if you could see it. So that was being cut off like that, which oh, can you see? But it doesn't matter, we've got it nicely and we've balanced it around. We've got a bird there that's got a pipe coming out of its head. We've got the main feature birds there and I'm happy with that. Now, it's brilliant on joints. This paper is brilliant on joints. Uh, you can't see any joints. I've seen rolled and got uh, my edges down. Now, in the angles, they did run out. Now, I've done videos. If you look over my shoulder, that shoulder or that shoulder, is it that shoulder? If you look over my shoulder, I've got videos for how to work out angles that run out. These ran out slightly, it was probably more at the top than the bottom, but obviously when you go in 
and you overlap round by a fraction of an inch, five millimetres, you might find that the piece that you put back into that corner and plumb in has to have a little bit of trimming off as well. Now, when you do that, just make sure that visually to your eye, you try and get the pattern flowing nicely. Now, on that corner there, I made sure that the butterfly was nicely positioned, that you could still see it because your eye was drawn to that. And then if you lost it on the branches and leaves, that's just one of those things. The other corner that was um, a bit of a tricky one was there. That ran out, but I made sure that because as you come into the room, you see the bird first. Now the bird actually has the pattern still flowing with it, albeit there's a little bit chopped off into it. The bird's probably a bit slimmer than it was when it was first on the board. No obese birds here. It's a little bit slimmer. It's probably shortened instead of it being there, it's shortened now. And it just probably runs out on these blossoms there. But again, you can't do anything about it. All I want to make sure is that these corners go in and what comes out is then plumb. So every length coming across there is also plumb and it is. So job's a good one. I'm really pleased with it. The other angle that was a tricky one, there's a little bit of a, if you can see, there's probably a strip about 150 if that to about there. And then the next length went from there all the way around. Now I don't like going around these externals in one, but because the external was a new one, it was quite good. It did go around in one. When you are doing an external and you're working on these sorts of corners, get it round at the middle and work from the middle up, middle down. Don't go from the bottom up, start with the middle. middle. Go middle to up, middle to down, working that corner, working it all the way up to the top and then bring it round. And then that joint there, you'll see me, I'm still here. That joint there is plumb because I have the laser line on it. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's brilliant on the joints. The little bit of a talky talky I did earlier on, little section I'll try and get in for this bit of a nasty piece there. I've butt jointed that up and that's quite good. So it's quite good, it's brilliant. Let's make some myself short. So here we go. This paper is beautiful. I would highly recommend it if anybody wants to um, get this paper hung. It's one of these ones that you measure your height, measure your width and you buy it per square meter and then it's all calculated and hand printed to, well I'll say hand printed, it's printed to the size of your room. So um, there we go, I'll say over and out, give some comments, have you done this paper, what do you think of it, smash that like button, bell, I'm not really worried about subscribers, if you want to subscribe you can do, I'm just happy if you just watch the video and gain some um, knowledge um, from hanging this sort of paper, let's call it advanced wallpapering again. So I'll see you on the next one. A bit longer, but the next one might be a